Amalfi, one of the most beautiful places in the world. A great town with an incredible history. We're going to talk to you about its fantastic cathedral. We're going to show you the streets, the shops of Amalfi, places where you can buy pastries and limoncello. Absolutely delightful. But we are a sailing magazine, so we're going to talk to you especially about the sea of Amalfi. Its bays, place where you can uh, go for a swim, and also practical information. Everything you need to know. So follow me and let's visit Amalfi. Welcome to Amalfi, one of the many amazing towns of this part of the Sorrentine Peninsula and the one that gives the name to the famous Amalfi Coast. We arrived this morning uh, from a Marina di Arechi in Salerno. Marina di Arechi is the largest marina in the entire Gulf of Salerno and it's the home base of NSS Charter. Uh, and we went there because they are the ones who made the, this video possible. They provided the boats, this Lagoon 42 and our support boat, another lagoon. And most important, they provided us with Simona Pasqua. Hi, Thank Simona. You. Hi, Gabriele. Simona has been working as a professional skipper for more than 20 years. Yeah. Uh, we find that hard to believe, but she says it, so it's no, got to be true. true. It is true. Okay, it's true. And. Uh, besides that, she's been with us on many videos. I'm sure some of you have seen her already. So we are very happy to have her. And she will be our guide in Amalfi. And so let's start right away with the first question. Simona, uh, let's say we arrive here and want to spend the night uh, with our boat. What do we do? What are we have got many options, Good. Gabriele. Yeah, we can dock, we can anchor, or we can go to a mooring field. Starting from the dock, we have got uh, four floating pontoons and one concrete pontoons. One is just for the Italian Lega Navale members. All of them have got all the basic facilities, of course, so water and electricity. We are going to find also public toilets, so toilets and shower, but careful that the shower are in the open. Okay, so bring your bathing suit. Yes, don't right? forget it. Yeah, and then there are the, the buoys, the mooring fields, right? Before that, I wanted to talk to you because there are other two concrete oh, docks okay. that are actually really important. One of them is to board and onboard passengers only. So don't leave your tender over there, okay? It's forbidden. Always leave your tender into the private pontoons. And the other one instead is for the traffic. And once the, the traffic stops, so from the ferry that brings the people here in Amalfi, from all the other places here in the Amalfi Coast, from 8 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning, you can stay there for free. Okay, but you good. need to call the Capitaneria di Porto, so the port authorities, and ask permission first. Right. You can anchor and then go back and with your so anchor and stern lines, and you can spend the night over there for free. Okay. It's going to be sand, the bottom, and just five meters, so really easy. Okay. Apart this, as you were saying, we have got then the mooring field. The closest one is in Atrani, which is the town really next to Amalfi. Very convenient because it's just five minutes walk. They've got 12 boys. They also offer a fantastic service, so water taxi. So they ferry you in and out. And in high season, you can stay out up to two, three o'clock at night in low season arrive a little bit earlier so up to midnight another good option that you are going to find here in the entire amalfi coast is that the restaurant offers you a service of mooring field the restaurants on the coast yeah the restaurant on the coast of course so if you go and eat at the restaurant then you can stay the night over there for free all of them have this service but one in particular which is teresa which is just three kilometers and out from amalfi she also offers a service that she ferries you back and forth from the restaurant here to the city so you can visit Amalfi as yeah, well. That sounds very good. Yeah. Okay. We're also going to talk about uh, staying at Anchor in a bay, but we'll do that later when we actually go visit them. Right now, what we really want to do is show you the town. So make way and let's go visit Amalfi. Let's go. Follow us.
finally here in Amalfi. Hey, now that we moved, how about going and see the city? Yeah, let's do that. I know you've been here lots of times, Simona. Yeah. So I'm counting you to show us around. And, but one thing I know about is the cathedral because I studied it because it has this fascinating city. So I can tell you everything about the cathedral. Yeah. And you can tell me everything about everything else. Yeah, deal. Okay, great. Let's go then. It's a very nice day. I'm really happy to be here. And there's lots of people, I mean, considering it's mid-October. Well, it's not surprising because Amalfi gets people all year round. It's one of the most beautiful places here in the southern of Italy and the Amalfi coast, I, I think. I think in the world. Yeah. Uh, Simona, tell me something about this place. Oh, we are now in uh, Flavio Gioia Square. We can see the statue over there. Oh, and right. the legend says that he discovered the compass. Yeah, I read about it. And uh, what I read was that actually, well, the Chinese had already discovered it many, many years before, but he was important because he brought it over probably or perfected it, so he brought it to the Western world. Well, luckily he did. <laughs> okay, thanks to Gioia. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and what about this uh, place over here? This is Porta della Marina and this is the ancient gate to the city. Right, beautiful. Yeah. The map over there, very, very nice. Everywhere we are going to see something. Amalfi is so interesting. Simona, this morning when you were uh, at the boat, I was at the town council. Really? They what? showed me an old copy of the Amalfi Laws. Oh, wow, I never saw it. Yeah, well, for our viewers, uh, well, I have to explain what they are, you know. But the Amalfi Laws are this code of navigation that was begun in the 12th century, but they continue to write it for 500 years, so all the way to the 17th century. First part in Latin, and then the rest was in Italian and Vulgare. Basically, what this code did was it set all the rules for the captains and the sailors, duties and rights, uh, the price of commodities, I mean, how much you had to pay to ship something from Amalfi to the east or from the east to Amalfi. So it's an amazing document. Became was so well done that it became the International Mercantile Code. So it's absolutely great. Incredible, yes. yes. Okay, having said that, uh, what do you suggest we show our viewers now? We are in Piazza Duomo, right. so let's start visiting the Duomo. Right, let's go. But first, follow me. I want to show you something, not show. Aww. I want to let you try something. Let me try something, sounds very good. Let's do that. Hello. Hello, Hi. hello. Hi. You are welcome. Thank you. Tell me something about where we are. We are in Panza Pastisserie. Okay. It's the most ancient patisserie here in the Amalfi Coast and on my test it's the best one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank and, you. And you are one of the Panzas, right? Yeah, I am Nicola Panza. It's right. a fifth generation from my family in, in the, this shop. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Nicola, so what do you recommend for our breakfast? Yeah, my recommendation for your breakfast is uh, for this cake. This is Sfogliatella Santa Rosa. Sfogliatella yes. Santa Rosa. It's a, uh, very, very good specialty making Amalfi Coast because it's prepared by first time in Santa Rosa Church in, by Conca de Marini. It's a very crown cheese foglia with ricotta cheese, custard cream and cherries. It's a very good. Sounds food. fantastic. Okay, we're going to try it right away. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. See bye. You. This looks great, Simona. Yeah, it so, is. Let's see if it's true. On my count, one. Two, three. Okay, we finally made it up the stairs of the Amalfi Cathedral. Yes. So uh, there's two things I wanted to show you, mm -hmm. which I read about. And one is uh, the front of the church, the facade. Uh, it was actually not this way up to the 19th century because they had built a baroque facade like they usually did in Italy. Mm -hmm. But what happened was this very strong wind 
falls down, so he said, okay, let's use this as an opportunity to rebuild it in the original style. Oh. And this is what we see today. This was towards the mid of the 19th century. Okay. And then the second thing is this portal. Now this is very special. It's, this door is all made in bronze, but it was not made here in Amalfi. It was made in Constantinople, and this powerful Amalfi family ordered this door. In fact, they ordered three of them. Okay. One of them they gave to the Abbey of Mount Cassino, one to the church of St. Paul outside the walls in Rome, and one is this one. Now, what was uh, the purpose of the door? Well, it was built by this guy called Simon of Antioch. Simon, like oh, you, Simona. Like me. Yes. And uh, it was made as a part of a strategy of alliance between Amalfi and Constantinople. Uh -huh. And you can see actually there are two saints. One is Saint Andrew, uh, Andreas, we I read see. the Latin. And the other one? Read the name. It says Petrus. Petrus, at Saint Peter, of course. And these are the uh, patron saint of uh, uh, Constantinople. Okay, uh, and the Catholic Church. Ex exactly. Okay. And so this is a sign of actually the alliance. Okay. Nice, very interesting story. Right, okay. And so, uh, right, we're done here. Let's go see the cloister of paradise. Yes, Yes, please. you wanted to see that. Okay, let's go. This is the cloister of paradise. Exactly. Okay. I never saw this, so you, I know you studied it. Mm -hmm. right? So you tell me what we need to know about this cloister. Okay. Which is very beautiful. It is. Okay, it was built in 1266 uh, and it's actually a cemetery. The noble family of Amalfi, they were buried here. Oh, and okay. yeah, there was at the beginning six chapels, one per family. Now we have got just five. Okay. And uh, every chapel uh, was adorned by amazing frescoes. But now, as you can see, yeah. it's That's left, okay. yeah, really yeah. a little of it. And another peculiarity is the sarcophagi over there that okay. you can see some. They were buried in them and they are made of marble. Okay, right. That's, that's very interesting. And it's very, very beautiful. I yeah. like the garden a lot. And one thing I have to show you mm -hmm. is inside that I know. Okay. Um, shall you follow me? Let's go. So this Simona is the church of the crucifix, uh, which was built in the 10th century, so it's very, very old. And of course, uh, some parts uh, are new, the plaster, but you can see the columns and, uh, you know, some of the frescoes from the 10th century church. But there was also another church earlier on, and there's the remains are, for example, that wall down there, mm -hmm. and that's from 6th century, okay, so even older. And right here we have this uh, Madonna with child. Now it was uh, taken from uh, a chapel when it was demolished and placed here. And this is a strategic position uh, because what they told me is that when the sun comes in at a certain hour from the windows, it shines on the Madonna with glows with light. So you can imagine all the farmers coming in and seeing the, the Madonna and being really, yeah, really impressed. And, and, and it's really beautiful with the, with the light. Okay, so this is an amazing place. Uh, and also the other important thing is the crypt, which is down there. And I wanted to show you. Let's go and have a look. Okay. We're coming in from the Basilica of the Crucifix, the Church of the Crucifix, and this is the Crypt of St. Andrew, but we're actually under the Amalfi Cathedral, which is, of course, uh, right next to the, to the Church of the Crucifix. Uh, and this, well, look at the frescoes. I mean, it's all frescoed, it's, it's really beautiful. It's all very well preserved. Uh, this is a Crypt of St. Andrew, was specially built to house the relics of the saint, which were brought here in 1208, okay? And that is the statue of uh, St. Andrew, 
which is in bronze, and it was made by the father of Bernini, the famous sculptor Pietro Bernini. And those are two uh, martyrs on the side. This one you can see, and this is uh, Saint Stephen. And uh, he was, uh, well, he was killed with rocks. And so actually you can see the rocks at his feet. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's how people knew which saint it was. Uh, so, and up there we can go to the cathedral, which is our next uh, stop. Let's go. Okay. So oh, this is the Cathedral of St. Andrew. Uh, when was it built? It was built in the 10th century, uh, you know, not, not long after that one. Maybe, you know, it, eventually they became like one church. We have a single fa facade, as you can see. Uh, and uh, 10th century, but of course, what you see here, unlike the Church of the Crucifix, it, which is, you know, partly really recent and partly very old, like 10 centuries. This is all Baroque, so... It's you know. very impressive. Yeah, it's, you know, the Baroque churches were meant to impress the faithful, especially the, the you know, the humbler ones, you know, the one from the lower classes, and they were astonished by the size and, and also the wealth that was displayed in the church. And one particular thing about this church is the Chapel of the Reconciliation. Okay. So this is the um, Chapel of the Reconciliation. They used to celebrate the uh, Orthodox uh, Mass downstairs in the crypt, uh, but now, like I was saying, they do it here. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is also, uh, well, it's, it's, they also have relics of St. Andrew here too. In here as well? Yeah, yeah, the they have the, uh, yeah. Was okay. downstairs. Absolutely. So let me explain. What they have here is the back of the head. Okay. And the body is downstairs. And you're going to ask why they did that. Yeah. Well, actually, there was also a practical reason, not only to have two places with the relics. Uh, they were afraid that there could be an incursion or, or somebody could steal the relics. So they thought, okay, let's hide the head. At least we'll have that. They hid it actually inside a column. Uh, then when the situation was safer, they uh, took the head and they placed it in this chapel. So that's why they have relics in, in two places. That's very clever. Yeah. And actually, that's not the only relic. They have the relics of no less than 40 saints in here. Oh, All wow. the statues you see. But why so many? Um, well, I think it had to do with the power of the relics. I mean, the, the more relics, the more protected, more famous was the, the, the church and the city. So. Oh, that's very clever of them, yeah. having so many. <laughs> okay, so... If you think we are done with the past, how about we go back to the present? Mm, what do you mean? I want to take you down to the street of Amalfi. And by Limoncello, perhaps? Yes, okay. why not? Okay, let's go. Go. Well, the cathedral has certainly a complicated history, but yeah. also very, very interesting. Yeah, but, it is. Uh, tell me something about uh, this place. We are now on the main square, and this one is the main street, the right. Corso. Which goes all the way up into the mountains, yeah, right? Yeah, it does, exactly. And just guess, in here before there was a river flowing. Really? Yeah. And the two banks were connected by little stone bridges. Then, after the plague of the 14th centuries, for health reasons, they decided to cover it up. Okay. And in some old buildings, uh, you can still see that what we think is the ground floor, in reality is not. And the real ground floor is actually underneath. So you go inside and down. Yeah, okay. exactly. And what happened to the river? It's no longer there? No, the river is still flowing. Oh, uh, underneath right us here. is a river. Yeah, yeah. What's exactly. its name? Canneto. Canneto. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. After the Duomo and the Corso, another typical thing here in Amalfi are these narrow streets, the alley. Yeah, they're so typical also in general, I think, of medieval cities. Because uh, 
they also had defensive purposes, that's what I read. Uh, I mean, basically, you had one strong Amalfi soldier. He would stand in the alley and hold off the pirates until help came from Benevento or somewhere, you know. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, speaking of history, uh, the most important period in the Amalfi history was the period of the Amalfi Republic, the so-called Maritime Republic, which was one of four. Pisa, Genoa, Venice, and Amalfi. These four uh, maritime republics uh, traded with the East, and of course to trade you needed ships, yep. right? And so the ships in Amalfi were built in something called the Arsenale, or Arsenal. And as you can see, there are two long tunnels, and in each of the two tunnels, you could build two ships. So a total of four ships at the same time could be built. And the, you can see it's on a slope, so uh, when the time came, for the ships just they were to just be launched into the sea. Oh wow, incredible. Yeah. As you saw, this one is the only road here in Amalfi. So cars and people have to live together in here. Yeah, the only street where cars can go? Yeah, okay, unfortunately. Yeah, so yeah. Cars, cars a scooter, buses, buses. donkeys, <laughs> lots of traffic. Everything. Yeah. Okay. And at the end of this road we have the water mills. Right, and that's also another important thing in the history of Amalfi because the water mills were used for paper factories. Now, uh, paper uh, was actually invented in China once again. Uh, the Arabs learned it from the Chinese and the people of Amalfi learned it from the Arabs. So around the year 1000, they started making paper. And the advantage of paper over parchment, which is made of animal skin, is that it's much less uh, expensive. expensive. Oh, so yeah. uh, they made this paper which became famous in all the world and we saw the factory, right? Yes, we That's, saw it today, yeah. which was really good because yeah. they let you do it your own paper. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite uh, fascinating. I think. Yeah. Listen, now the Corso is almost finished, so how about if I take you to a Belvedere? Sure. I want to show you Amalfi from above. Let's do that. Let's, Let's go. go. Wow, thank you, Simona. This view is amazing. You were right to come here. Yeah, it's okay. incredible. Well, now that we are here, we can see the entire Sorrentine Peninsula. I wanted to ask you, uh, let's say uh, a sailor comes here, rents a boat like we did in Salerno from NSS Charter, and he has one week. Okay. What would you as skipper recommend? What itinerary? Okay, then starting from Salerno, we go directly to Positano, which is uh, beyond the Cape over there, okay. so that direction. From Positano, the next morning, going to the island of Capri. Of course. Yes, unmissable. Uh, the day after, we can sail to the island of Ischia, then the island of Procida, then Sorrento. Of course. And from Sorrento, if you have time, don't miss out to stop in Nerano for an amazing and really tasty pasta alla Nerano. And Nerano is also here on the Amalfi Coast, right? Yes. Okay, so already yes. coming back around the peninsula. Yeah, exactly. And then where, where do we go? After Nerano, we come right here oh, in Amalfi. Okay. We right. spend the night here visiting the city and the next day back home to Salerno. Okay, sounds absolutely great. Let's say we're in luck and we have two weeks. What do we okay. do? In that case, we have got two options. One, we can decide to go south uh, over Cilento, okay. which is an amazing place yeah. and really few people know it and right. sail over there. And it's very wild yes. with amazing waters. Or if we prefer going north, we can do after Ischia, the island of Ischia, okay. sail north to Ventotene, then on to Ponza, the island of Ponza, and then the next day back to the island of Ventotene, Procida, Sorrento, and as we did before, right. Amalfi, and then Salerno. Okay, sounds great. Okay, shall we visit Amalfi? Yes. Okay, let's, let's go. go.
You've worked a lot with NSS Charter. I mean, not only with us, of course, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. How is it? Oh, really good. I like it. You know, you can see that they're a big company. Well, they have lots of bases, I mean, all over they the world. They do. And even though two are very new, the one that we started from Salerno Porto and the Rosa. one in yeah. Sicily, yeah. yeah, from Porto Rosa, all the boats are new. They are really well right. maintained. So there are just very few problems that can happen. It's a pleasure to be on their boats. Ciao, Simona. I'll catch up with you later. Okay, bye-bye. Ciao. Uh, Giulio, I had this question I was wondering about. What do we do with the waste here in Amalfi? The waste, when you are uh, on, the, on the marina, there is no problem. Uh, okay. you, we accept that. When you are outside, and uh, it's not possible to accept it because uh, Amalfi is no provider about that. Okay, so if I'm at bay, I cannot take a bag of waste to no, the shore? No, no. no. Uh, the only place where they get is Positano, Capri and Sorrento. Okay. But the next year, maybe Amalfi it will provide this service anyway. Okay, let's hope so. Thanks, Giulio. Talk to you later. For nothing. Ciao. Pleasure. Well, from the top of the Belvedere up there, you already saw some of this amazing coast. There's lots of little bays you can stop at. We couldn't show them all, but we picked two of the nicest ones. Uh, and this is the first one, about uh, one mile west of the port. Simona, what's the name of this bay and tell us something about it. We are in Santa Croce Bay. The beach of Santa Croce is right behind us. And there we find also Teresa. Oh, the restaurant with the buoys, yeah. right, which are over there. Yeah, exactly. That. The bottom is between 10 and 15 meters, and depending where we anchor, we can have, for example, right where Teresa is, is sun, the first part, and then is grass. But if you move a little bit west, where we are now, more or less, it's rocky, the first part, but it's flat rock and then it's grass. Yes. Can you go ashore and spend some time on the beach if you want to? You have to be careful about okay. that because the beaches where the restaurants are, those ones are safe. But some others, like the little one over there, which is really nice, unfortunately there are falling rocks. Yes. So you need to be careful. In which case you would see the sign Massica Denti. In that case, falling rocks, be careful. Having said that, well, let's go see the other bay. Yeah. Let's go. Show me. So we left the Bay of Santa Croce and we are now 1.5 miles east of the port of Amalfi, which is in that direction. We're in a nice little bay and we want Simona to tell us, first of all, the name. We are in Marmorata. The Bay of Marmorata. Okay. Uh, let's say we want to spend the night here. What do we have to worry about? Uh, we can, but we have to be not that close to the shore because all around the area we are going to find buoys that are from the hotel. Okay, yeah. so basically buoys that uh, prevent you from going close to the exactly. people who are swimming. Okay. Exactly. Okay. They are not here now because we are in low season, but during the high season we are going to find them. Okay. So the anchorage spot is start around 15 meters then onwards. Okay. And and about the sea bottom is going to be a mixture of sand and grass. Okay, no problem there. Can you expand a little bit uh, about the winds? Yeah, of course. Uh, the prevalent wind in the area are west and northwest. The northwest is going to be totally sheltered, so we are not going to have any waves. Uh, from the westerly wind, we can have some waves depending how strong it is and depending how close are we going to be inside the bay. Uh, all the northerly wind, uh, we are going to be totally sheltered, uh, meaning no waves, but we have to be careful about the wind themselves. Right. Yeah, we saw that in Amalfi, when the wind comes from the north or from the northeast, what happens is that it accelerates uh, uh, going down the mountains and then even if the forecast is 20 knots, then it can go exactly. up to 30. Exactly. Right? So that's something you should keep in mind. Also. 
what else should we ah the southerly about? wind we are going to be totally exposed to those and not even the dock of amalfi is going to be a good place to be in so the two options are going to chetara uh, but it's a very small harbor and the best one is going to be going back to salerno to the marina d'arechi which is just 10 miles from us yes so one hour and a half you can be back in arechi and be sheltered for the night exactly okay. all right Having said that, well, the sun is going down and maybe we could back to Malfi and have a nice dinner. Yeah, why not? Let's go. So as we are approaching Amalfi, before we go to dinner, there's two more things I wanted to tell you. The first thing is practical. Uh, it's forbidden to anchor in front of the port. Nowhere in front of Amalfi can you anchor. Remember that because if you do, they will give you a ticket and it won't be cheap. Second thing, well, we'll be staying at the floating pontoon of the Coppola family. That place is on the one hand very, very complicated and on the other hand very, very easy. Why? Well, it's very complicated because you have to go through a very narrow opening with a very large boat in our case but it's also very easy because we don't have to do anything. Everything will be done by Giulio Coppola, the greatest expert in mooring in the entire world. So Simona will be re relaxing and Giulio will take care of everything. So let's go see what he does. So, a great conclusion to a great day, Simona. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> absolutely. The town is absolutely beautiful and the coast is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And so... Buonasera. Buonasera. Good evening. Grazie. Thank you very much. Okay. And so, in English, I'll say it, you understand. Cappellini al limone. Okay. Absolutely delightful. What's the recipe? Allora, è un capellino gamberi al limone. Una pasta tipica locale, viene cotta all'interno dello stesso sugo e viene fatta con una base di scalogno, grattugiata di limone e gamberi, sfumato il tutto con la vodka e portato a cottura. Mantecato all'olio extravergine d'oliva e finito con una grattugiata di limone. Fantastico. It was really good. Buonasera. Buonasera. Oh, this one is the same brand we had today. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Antichi sapori da Malfi. It was so good. Yeah. The and all the rest that we tried today as well. Oh yeah, I like the nocino too. It was very, very good. All of them, great lemons. And a great town, Amalfi. Absolutely worth a visit. Great place, great history and fantastic coast. Absolutely amazing what we saw today and you saw too. So if you did enjoy the video, I hope you did. Well then click on like, so let us know. And before I go, let me thank NSS Charter. They've been amazing. They provided the boats and the support to shoot, their, shoot this video. So thank you, NSS Charter. Uh, the appointment is for the next video of SVN Network.